Hey, what's up guys, Wolfgore here. So today I wanted to run by you five reasons why I think Bloodborne is better than Dark Souls. Now, of course, these are just my subjective opinions and I love the Dark Souls games. I love all Soulsborne games. So be gentle with me in the comments below. Reason number five, the healing systems. So personally, I think that Blood Vials are a much better system than either Estus or Life Gems ever were. Uh, the Blood Vials are just really responsive, like when you when you hit triangle, boom, your character is using that blood vial and you're still able to control your character and move around, making micro movements in combat. And this feels especially responsive when compared to something like Dark Souls 2. When you try to use an Estus Flask with low agility, your character is going to stop for what feels like a good two seconds every time you try to heal and uh, just sit there and slowly sip on his orange juice, which is just... Oh so, oh, oh, so frustrating. The simplicity of it is also great, as opposed to constantly having this variable of how much you've strengthened your Estus or how many Estus flasks you have available to you, you just have a nice static 20 blood vials that always heal for the exact same amount, which I want to say is 35% of your maximum health. And when it comes to just having enough healing items at your disposal, I think the blood vial system really just got it perfectly. Because when you're playing through a zone slowly in Bloodborne and taking your time killing all the enemies and exploring, the level gives you pretty much exactly the amount of blood vials that you're going to need to complete it and even kill the boss. For the most part, I don't think that the blood vial system really gets the credit that it deserves, and that's simply because it's such a simple, efficient, and well-balanced system that people don't really think about it. It just is kind of there, and it just works. Number four. The Repost and Visceral Attack Systems. Once again, this is completely subjective, but in my opinion, guns are just way cooler and funner than shields. Maybe that's just because I'm an American and we are all apparently gun nuts, but I just love the feeling of having Evelyn in my left hand and popping an enemy as its giant rock weapon is about to smash my face in. It just feels more gratifying, more fun to me than, than knocking their hand away with a shield. And nothing against knocking their weapon away with a shield, it's just guns are just funner. In addition, you're also able to parry at range. You don't have to be right in front of the enemy's close hit marks. And then, of course, we need to talk about the actual visceral attack follow-ups to the riposte. Now, don't get me wrong, they're great in Dark Souls. You know, you, you stab them through the chest and you kick them off your weapon, or the backstab system where you circle around them and knock them down onto their knees and execute them. It's super cool. But in Bloodborne, you literally shoot them as they're trying to hurt you. They fall down to their knees, you reach inside their chest and pull out their beating heart, spraying blood everywhere, and like it doesn't get any more epic than that. Plus, that along with the recovery system, which we're going to talk about next, just makes a really satisfying flow of combat. Number three. The recovery system. So if you're not familiar with the recovery system in Bloodborne, what it allows you to do is to regain the health that you may have lost in combat uh, for up to five seconds. So let's say an enemy hits you with his sword, you've got five seconds to get back in his face, hit him a few times, and recover all of that health. I find that this makes the combat incredibly fluid and really encourages you to stay in the fight rather than dipping out, putting up your shield, sipping on your Estus for five seconds, and then slowly working your way back in. And when you're able to just stay in the fight and maintain your health bar without having to get out and heal, it just feels really good and rewarding. Number two, the trick weapons. So when it comes down to the trick weapons of Bloodborne versus the traditional weapons of Dark Souls, I really gotta give it to the trick weapons, because every single weapon in Bloodborne, <clears throat> except for the fucking cost Parasite, is really viable, and it has a full, complete move set that really just showcases the, the depth of the weaponry in that game. Whereas in Dark Souls, there's an overwhelming amount of weapons, which, don't get me wrong, really adds depth to the game and allows you to do cool things like broken straight swords runs. I don't have anything against the Dark Souls weapon system, but the Bloodborne system is just so much more streamlined and easier to, to understand. I mean, you can literally use any weapon in Bloodborne and they are all pretty darn balanced. Whereas investing your Titanite shards in the wrong weapon early in a Dark Souls playthrough might really come back to bite you in the ass because a lot of the weapons just aren't viable in PvE or PvP, or they're only good in one or the other. There's so much I could say on how great of a combat system the trick weapons are, but one thing that I really like to highlight is the animation that you get when you successfully complete a power R2 with a trick weapon. Something about it is just really satisfying being able to see that little visual indicator and that sound that lets you know you did that shit right. 
and now you can move on with your attack combo. Number one, sequels. So one of the bittersweet things about Bloodborne is that it's a standalone title. We are almost positive that we are not gonna be getting Bloodborne 2, whereas Dark Souls has two sequels to it. It came out as a standalone title and they decided to add on multiple games to the franchise. Now, I don't wanna pick on Dark Souls 2 too much because it is a game that I've enjoyed playing and I don't have anything against it per se, but it is not the masterpiece that Dark Souls 1 was. And I think almost every Soulsborne gamer can agree on that. Whereas I would say Dark Souls 1 and Bloodborne are very comparable. Both I'd put at about a 9.5 out of 10. Whereas Dark Souls 3, is more like an 8, Dark Souls 2 is more like a 7. So when you factor all of the Dark Souls games together, you get an average of about an 8. Whereas Bloodborne sits alone at a 9.5. And I really think that kind of gives it the edge. Because if we never get a Bloodborne 2, it can't be messed up. It's always going to be one of the most perfect titles that I've ever played. And don't get me wrong, I would love to have Bloodborne 2, but I'm just trying to appreciate the silver lining of the fact that we're never gonna have it be watered down by sequels that may not stand up to their predecessor. I also think this has an effect on the lore of the games. Because all of Bloodborne's lore is contained within one single game, it's much easier to get into, to understand and internalize and appreciate. Whereas Dark Souls is not only spread out over three different titles, but the titles were never intended to have linked lore. As I said before, the original game was meant to be a standalone title. So the lore doesn't necessarily sync together as perfectly as if Dark Souls 1 had been the beginning and the end of the franchise. Well, chaps, I hope you appreciated my take on the pros and cons between Dark Souls and Bloodborne. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button for me. I really do appreciate it. If you'd like to subscribe for more of my content, I would really appreciate that too, but no pressure. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.